Good evening and welcome to the legendary Gold Coast Hotel and Casino and National Finals Tonight. Brought to you in part by Jack Daniels, Coors, Pendleton Whiskey, Boot Barn, Cooper Tires, Ram Rodeo, Justin Boots, the American Paint Horse Association, Prefert, Classic Leather Designs, Crusion Rum, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, J.W. Brooks Hats, Wrangler, Montana Silversmiths, Seagram's Gin, and Boyd Gaming. National Finals tonight with eight-time world champion bull rider Donnie Gay, eight-time world champion cowboy Joe Beaver, and the men and women of the NFR. Sit back, relax, and enjoy National Finals tonight. And now, here's your host, award-winning television personality, Mr. Dan Miller. Michael, hi. Hi, everyone. Welcome to National Finals tonight. What a great crowd. Are you ready to have a good time tonight, huh? Yes, I like this. Did you enjoy the rodeo tonight? Round seven now in the books, and uh, we'll have a lot of things. This show is packed this evening. A lot of things to talk about. A lot of friends that are with us here this evening, friends and family. So let's get this, let's get this evening started. I'm going to introduce my co-hosts here this evening. Actually, they're the stars of the show, and I, and I say that only because uh, Donnie wants me to. He is an eight-time <laughs> world champion bull rider, my best bud. Donnie Gay is in the house tonight. Donnie. Yeah, look at that. Are y'all ready to have a little fun tonight? They are. Okay, yeah. We're in Las Vegas. We are in Las Vegas, yes. And did there's you, lots... I didn't hear you. Did you say what I... How was the introduction? I mean, did you get all that out that I had on the list? Yeah, most of it. I'm saving some of oh. it for a little bit later on for that lull when you get to feeling bad. Then I'll bring okay. that other stuff up. The other gentleman we have here is also a, an eight-time world champion cowboy. The best heart in Las Vegas as well. Would you welcome our friend Joe Beaver is here tonight. Joe, big Joe, big, big Joe. Big Joe. Hey, where's the lady you've been here? Whoa. I like it. Bold in blue. That's what we're doing. Listen, there's more stuff. There's so much stuff we're going to give away tonight. And uh, what I want to tell you about Joe throwing out the... There's a lot of things we need to talk about, but the shirts, Joe, let's talk about that because tomorrow is going to be a big night here. Tomorrow night, uh, the blue is diabetes. About 10 years ago, we started a little thing called Tough Enough to Wear Pink, and it was the same way uh, we started selling T-shirts, you know, for 20 bucks. And uh, Terry Wheatley got behind it, Wrangler got behind it, we got the big rodeo committees behind it and now it's a million dollar a year deal. So I thought it was time to pick something else and try to give something else back. We picked diabetes, it's a major cause of sickness and death and we're starting the same way, blue shirts. Tomorrow night, first official blue night. Um, we're gonna give away a lot of blue t shirts. It's gonna be, everything will be blue here. It's gonna be on you know pictures, it's on the web like that. So uh, first official blue night was at the Indian Finals. Three weeks ago, Donnie and I worked the Indian Finals. We started there, and we're going to pick it up here, and hopefully a couple of years, it'll be a big deal like the pink. Joe Beaver, good man, you good know, man. I, I got to say, I got to say this, you know, he said we, so, you know, all that, the tough enough to wear pink, that was Joe, and then the blue night, bold enough to be, to wear blue, you know, he's throwing those t-shirts out, he's bringing them in, I mean, he's packing the boxes, and, and for y'all that uh, are around this rodeo know how busy he is and all of the appointments he makes, but he makes time, and he just does that because he thinks that's the right thing to do. So I think one more round of applause for Joe Beaver. Not a lot of guys, a lot of guys talk about helping, but he does it. Joe Beaver. We're so glad he's up here with us. And today, Joe, I don't know if you knew what an official big day this was in Las Vegas. Did, have you heard? It came, it's straight from Mesquite. This, this, it's, this, on the, it's on the, what, what's it on? World, the World Wide on, Web. World Wide Web, three times. Right. Say it. <laughs> today in Las Vegas is officially Donnie Gay Day. How about that? All right. Wow. Normally they wait till you're dead to do that. Man, oh man. They got close. <laughs> Boy, so since 7 o'clock this morning, he's been kissing babies and, and uh, uh, just like a politician today, huh? 
Well, it's been pretty busy. It really has, but it, it really was a lot of fun, and, and I appreciate it. But, uh, gosh, there's plenty to do already in Las Vegas. But, uh, you know. Who is he nice trying to Hey, wait a know, minute. But me Who and is he Harbor trying Day. to fool? Me, you know, <laughs> damn well, he woke up this morning at 5 o'clock, Donnie Gay Day. You hear that? <laughs> Shit. He might as well tell somebody else that day and not us. Well, you know who told me. How do you think I know about Mesquite? He texted back to Mesquite. But he probably didn't spell it right if he texted. I'm just going to tell you. <laughs> oh, come on. It's going to be a good night. Hey, I want to tell you, if, you are, um, if you're here and you want somebody at home to tune in, we are going out live on the World Wide Web, even as we speak. And maybe when you get home, you want to watch through the last uh, rounds here. Here's the address on the World Wide Web, boydgaming.com forward slash nft boydgaming.com forward slash nft and you can watch these shows they're all cataloged there in case you've missed anything and actually we have found out joe that people are watching from all over the world we've had people uh, that have texted in and talked to us and foreign countries and uh, i'm getting into that texting yeah you are getting yeah. into that texting I, 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 I know one thing it's it's uh it's it's live and popular in the dominican republic i've got a bunch of friends down there that rope and and they're, they're down if they're here yet or not. They're a little slow. They kind of have their own time frame. <laughs> it's called Dominican time. You, I tell them to be here at 10 at 12, 15. They're right on time, you know. But they are watching it down there. They got here today to watch the finals. And they said, hey, we've been keeping up, you know, and watching it. On, and that's pretty cool. That it is started cool. out to be just a little gathering of a few tables. And now we're, we're over big. 600 I thought you were laying down there on the beach you know getting you a suntan drinking one of them things with an umbrella in it well know. i am but you know me better than that i'm also trying to get them to rope <laughs> <laughs> the more they rope the more those little drinks i can have oh, yeah. <laughs> also if you have a question during the course of the show this evening and you have your telephone with you here is you can text us a question the number is 702 luck nft or it's 702 582 are you texting a question already <laughs> He's writing down Donnie Gay Day. It's right there on. No, I wanted to see what L is five. Yep, five eight two, five six three eight seven zero two five eight two five six three eight. If you want to send us up a question, what I want to tell you quickly, guys, you see this guitar behind us that we're going to be giving away. This Fender guitar. Look at all those signatures on there. That we give away a guitar every night, but tonight I'll tell you this one: Neil McCoy, Faith Hill, the Oak Ridge Boys, Ronnie Millsap. Uh, Lee Greenwood, unbelievable. Uh, Martina wait minute, McBride. Wait a, wait a minute, Donnie and I had a better idea. <laughs> We're gonna auction it off and give it to Donnie Gay Day, and then he, it'll be money for him. You know. Oh, that's yeah, a good deal. That's a good deal. <laughs> Very good. I'm liking that. Joe's my new agent. <laughs> we're going to do that at the end of the show. Lots of prizes to get away this evening. In case you were not able to watch the rodeo tonight on television, Donnie and Joe doing it live on GAC. Donnie and I doing the Extreme Bulls on GAC, and we're thankful to Great American Country going out live every single round. If you didn't see the rodeo and didn't see the highlights of the winners, these guys are going to do it for you as we speak. Guys, if we'll rack that up back there and roll it. Round seven, Donnie Gay, take it away. All right, NFR, let's go with the bareback riding. KC Field is wearing them out. Go ahead and start working on the gold engraving. But this horse right here is just really one of those sweet potato bucking horses. Round to the right, but it doesn't really make any difference. This guy is riding so good, and he may, may be the most fit bareback rider going in there. I mean, he likes it. Watch both spurs coming to the rigging. Body right down that horse's back line, not leaning one side or the other, making a tight turn. He's 85 and a half, but he got a re-ride to get that horse. So the guy that was winning, you know, fourth or fifth, they boom, just got boom, 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 you know. Boom. All right, in the steer wrestling, Olin Hannum finally struck. He hadn't won anything all week. Kind of light go around, 3-8 wins first. The difference tonight was Olin hannum has been catching steers behind him. In other words, he's catching them out of the stirrup way back here low, late. Watch how early he catches the steer. He's got him locked up deep in the catch. Got the horn brought over the hip when his left leg hits the ground. That sets up the throw. And when you throw him fast, you're going to win. But when you catch him deep in that behind your stirrup, like he's been doing for six go rounds, didn't work. Change it tonight. Team roping. They showed up again tonight. I, I got on them pretty early, but they're right now. <laughs> All right, Eric Rogers, Indian champ. Corey Coots, he heals him fast as you can. The difference was Eric changed horses two nights ago. Hey, I'm a big believer. If it ain't working, change something. And All he right. did. He got on a gray horse, Jake Longbreak. Eric, Eric, you know, Eric is one of the two Native Americans yep. in the NFR. and uh, They were in they the top five when it started. Guys. I told them Satellite TV is going to ruin the team roping. Them reservations know they can rope now. That's exactly right. Talos Muncy, he's working on world championship number two. And the way you ride Bronx is just like this. 
a leg extension in time with this bucking horse, making a good. And watch this, uh, shade to Hooter Brown, you know, a little flying. And that's in the seventh go around. You know, he I mean, feels good. He, he's feeling it right now. But you watch, it all starts with the spur out. You think that makes it more difficult? Announcer's been BSing you for years. That sets up the ride. When you spur one out properly, you can lift that horse up make that kind of ride. Look how he handles his rein, keeping it out of the way. Uh, that's right in front of the judges. That was pretty. Tonight, the tie down roping three times, seven, six. First one, Ryan Jarrett, stringing from the belt. You watch it, when he flanks his kip, it's not in his mouth. See him grab it out of the belt. One wrap, Mahui, he's gonna be good, seven, six. He misses strings a lot of kids. When he grabs it out of his mouth, he spits it out. So he opted for the belt this year, and it's working. The difference is, watch, when he grabs the front leg, see how his eyes never leave the front leg? He's, he knows it's here. When it's in his mouth, he spits it a lot of times and doesn't catch it. 7-6, you think you're safe? Here comes Tyson Durfee, by far the best run made tonight. This calf was strong, calf ran hard to the right. Tyson put two wraps in the hooey on him, stayed down, stayed focused, made a great run. Right here, this kid hits him. And you know what I mean? This kid weighs 230, 240. When he hits him, he's got the advantage. Tyson sits down there, ties him like he's supposed to. No two-hand ties. I hate those. That was a great run. Then, horse of the year, sweetness, Clint Cooper. There's three of those boys here. They forget about this one sometimes. This one ropes just as good as any of them. He's the oldest, so they kind of, you know, sometimes all they talk about the young one all the time. But guess what? Clint Cooper did a great job of scooping that calf off Picked the ground. Him up, yeah. Picked him up. Got his legs up high. Kind of bobbed his front leg right there. But when you cross him low like that and you put a wrap mahoo on him, you're going to get a victory lap. How good has the barrel racing been this year? It is unbelievable, unbelievable. and tight. And look at who have thought Martha would have been there. Yeah. Here we go. Here's Martha. Left barrel first. Donnie's talked about it. I've talked about it. Ground doesn't seem to bother. It doesn't do nothing but get stronger the longer the week goes. You can go either way you want first, left or right. Martha goes left. Barrel's a little easier to see, maybe left. Runs out strong. And look at that, 1356. Another first place for Martha and Lindsey Sears. Bull riding. You know, it's chicken one day, feathers the next. They ride nine out of 15 last night. Tonight, they ride two out of 15. Clayton Savage, early bird, round of the left into his hand, sweet potato, making a good bull ride, but it ain't over till it's over. You gotta get off. You gotta know how to ride good enough to protect yourself. This was not Clayton's fault. He goes to get off away from his hand. He comes away from his hand and hangs that spur in the handle, but he wins first place. You know, gets that $17,000 check. This is a really nice bull, a really nice bull ride. And I tell you, that hanging up, and that probably lasted, you know, a good 15, 18 seconds. And that's, that's as hard on the bull as it is on the cowboy. Joe and Donnie doing it live for you. Give them a hand there, if you will. Good job, guys. Uh, you know, when, when we put this together, the last guy out tonight was Shane Proctor, and he was here just a couple of nights ago with us, Donnie. But the effort that he put in on his bull ride tonight, I just, we, we queued it up for you, and I just wanted you to talk about well, I'm, Shane I'm glad Proctor. Well, I'm glad that you did, because this has world championship uh, implications. This bull turns back to the right, and, and I mean, what he said the other day, he needed to get his hips up there and get going, cut loose with his spurs. Well, this bull quits him right here, just quits bucking like he's supposed to and turns into a piece of junk. And look here, he makes the whistle. How many 7.9 something bull rides do you see all year long? This right here, he's got a great chance to buck off. He's, all he's got to do is just let go. No, no. He goes ahead, the whistle blows right there. He gets off. Now, he goes up one bull on uh, the field Got to win the average, going to win the world championship. If he gets the strap on the gold buckle, and it's not over by any means, he can look back to this ride and this extra effort. This is what being a cowboy means to me. If he, you want to win the world buckle, then this is not pretty. But you know what? He won second place. He's got uh, $14,000 worth of points, but he also won about you know, 25000 with ground money. But, you know? but it was extra effort. You talk about this all the time. I've talked to you a million times about guys that look like they give up at five, at five or and six And I'll tell, you, I'll tell you how There's classy. There's no give up. I'll tell you how classy he was. He walked up. He got his rope. He walked up behind the chutes. J.W. was walking back. I thought J.W. should have got a re-ride. Yep. The bull stumbled and, you know, went down far enough to get one. Judges disagree. They didn't give him a re-ride. Shane Proctor walked by and he goes, hey, I know it benefits me, but you should have got a re-ride. You know, I, I just thought that was a class act. It was a tremendous strain on the judges because that is such a difficult call. Joe and I have talked about it. We hate re-rides, period. But the deal is, 
is the judges are in a if no, you're no give win. One, it, you give them all. And they already yeah. had given one in my yeah. mind. But you know what? That's uh, just another guy's opinion. But uh, right. they made the call, and, and uh, uh, whether it's right or wrong, that's in the book. It does mean something for somebody to come up, though, and tell you that. If you think you're had, either way, I thought tonight in the team rope, and there's one team got had. Uh, they roped them face tight. Everything's quick. The clock never stops running. Go to backup clocks, you know. But the backup clocks sometimes just don't seem as fast as the other one. And it, and I saw the one of the boys that was that beat them by a ten come by him and said, "Hey, I thought you got us, but you know we made a good run." That that's what it's about. And it's the younger guys we're seeing some of that. And I'm gonna be honest with you. In the last eight years, six yeah. years, the I thought the younger guys were they were a little little they were just a little shitty. They, they weren't, they had no respect for guys, you know, I'm calling it like it is. They did trading, they would try to run under you. They would try to run under you on the best run. They would, they would do, you know, whatever they could to help themselves. And I saw the kind of the character going down a little bit. And the last year, year and a half, with things like him telling him, Shane Proctor telling him that, these young guys I saw tell the Team Roper team that, that gives me a little more, a little more You feel, feel better about I it. I feel a little better. It's coming back up, and that's what we're all about, being good people, too. Yep, absolutely. We have a question that's come in, but before we want to get that, because it's going to be a can of worms, I can tell already. But what I did, uh, we also put together, you know, it's the seventh round. Some guys are hurting, and boy, some guys hit the ground hard tonight, and some very close calls. So I put a short rec tape together for you. Uh, let's start this off, and Joe, let's start it off with you in the yeah, steer wrestling. Stockton Graves, I'm telling you, one of the major injuries in steer wrestling is torn pec muscles. This right here is just set up for a torn pec on the left side. What happens is a steer will set and when they set, a lot of times you hit them behind the head hard, trying to catch them. Watch the left horn. See how it drives the left horn past his hand, and it just sticks it right in here above your pocket. And I'm telling you what, when you take a hit like that, it, it's, it's a, look, see how you kind of missed the horn? So his hand is over the horn. It's not under it where it's supposed to be. So that horn is right there in that peck. He was lucky. Well, Tyler Corrington, he has hit the ground a time or two, but you know, it never hurts to be a little lucky. Check the back beat. You know, you get piled up here, you hit, you roll. I mean, and it, it, it's just one of those things. Good spur out, jacks him up out of his saddle. That is over the dashboard. But you just got to keep on rolling, but uh, at just the right time. The horse doesn't particularly want to step on him, but you know what, if you're in the way. But uh, Tyler Corrington, I thought he dodged a bullet close, right there. Yeah. Now we'll show you in the bull riding, we'll show you the wreck. I, I want you to watch the bullfighters. In the red shirt, Daryl Diefenbach. Uh, that's Dusty on the right. Here comes Bergeron. Now watch Diefenbach. He's already been in once, got knocked down, got knocked down again. Now watch Diefenbach. Goes back in. Now he's got the tail of the rope. Now he sees what's happened. The spur is stuck in the handle, and he's trying to figure out how to get it loose, how to pull because he doesn't have a knife in his pocket. He gets that worked out because if he doesn't get it to come on loose, they're still there dragging around. But, you know, whenever you, when you get up, when everybody gets up, the bull rider doesn't get stomped on, doesn't get his leg broken, doesn't get his neck broken. I mean, you, you just look at all this. That's one. That's a thank you Jesus moment right there. How about our stable bullfighters at the NFL? Unbelievable. Have they not been outstanding all week long? Almost every night. Almost every night, something like that's happened. Not quite that severe, but uh, yep. been pretty wicked. All right, and let's try, gentlemen on this question that we were sent up, because I already know it. He, let's try to uh, be brief on this. The question is. Well, I'm, I, missed the, I missed his first horse, the one he got to re-ride on. Okay. Quest, the question was why, why Casey did Casey Field, Field get a re-ride re tonight and, and then subsequently win the go-round? And I missed the first ride. I was Did you watch any of the bareback riding? I watched about did, half of it. Did you see a couple that were a little weak? I, you yeah, all, all of the horses in there were what I call sweet potato hoppers. And there was a couple I thought kind of give it up at the end. Where's... Where's your brother? He watch it all. He'll back me on this. Where's Jim? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, I thought there was two or three that, uh, uh, my opinion, of course, I'm, but I saw two or three that got a little weak at the end. You know, they, they spurred it out of them. They kind of got a little weak. Casey's come back, and his got a little weak at the end, kind of went stalling out of the fence and got weak. But I didn't see him giving re-rides on any of the other ones. And his may have hesitated a little bit more, stopped a little more, so the re-ride was given. But it's like you said, what? I don't... I worry about re-rides because they always get the man in the lead. The guy, the guy that gets guy. bumped out of the bottom hole is the one that always suffers. It, you know, you, you don't always come back and win first. And, uh, but, you know, the thing that 
to, I don't defend the judges very often, but in the re-ride situation, it's not always what happened in this performance. Right. In other words, there might not have been another one uh, in there. It would happen if they gave a rewrite in the first performance and they have their mark in their mind. And you have to remember, there's, there's four judges, they, you know, and they average those scores for, for the guys. And any one of the four can give a rewrite. But so out of the four, they chose hey, and you know one what of else? them. Isn't yeah. sometimes when it's your time, it's your, it's your, it, when you're on a roll, you, yeah. there's been times when this hot, year, hot, there's buddy. been times this year he probably needed a rewrite and didn't get one. So, I mean, it all works out. It's just, it's like drawing good and drawing bad. The person that says they never draw good is a liar. Let's, 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 an, let's answer a question that actually has a real answer. Oh, How can we donate to the Bold and Blue campaign? And I'm glad they brought this up. <laughs> T-shirts are for sale in the gift shop. Yes. They're for sale at the Phoenix, uh, booth and at the uh, board gaming booth at the at the convention center and there will be a website up bold enough to wear blue diabetes research and funding it should be up right after christmas because i kind of had to redo it because of some name problems but it'll be up and the money goes to that i want it to go to research i want it to go to diet to teach kids exercise you know you're not going to help some people that are you know, 70 years old won't change their diet, but if we can teach our kids how to eat a little better and how to exercise, that's where my part of the money is wanting to go to, the funding of that. And get them off the Xbox game. All right. Okay. All right, let's get with it. You know, we were talking about just a moment ago about the young people and how things have changed and looking good, and tonight's going to be a prime example about that. I'm so anxious for this young man to, to come out here, and he's one of Joe's students, and, and uh, he, he just loves this young man, and I'm anxious to meet him. Mr. Corey Solomon from the Tie Down Roping. Corey. Smile. Oh, the youth, the young guns here that we have tonight. Look at that million-dollar smile. It's good to have you with us tonight. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. Tell us about this first trip to the big show and uh, how it all feels. It was hard to take in walking in that first time for the Grand Energy, but, I mean, it was like a dream come true. I mean, I worked at it, you know, from when I was a baby and looking up when I was 13 to 14 when I really knew what I wanted to do, but... To make it here for the first time, it didn't start off like I wanted, but I wasn't in a bad position. But I just kept working. I knew it would turn around because I have faith in myself and faith in God. I knew it would turn, and it turned around third round. And it has turned around. It's turned, all right. And uh, Joe Beaver, tell us about your relationship with this young man. Did he come to you looking no, for? I've known this whole family. He's got two brothers real good. One of them's here. I don't know if Lawrence is here or not, but there's three of them, and they're dead. And, and I'm telling you, since they were all little, they, their work ethic has been unbelievable. They've practiced, they've fought at it, they've worked to get to go, they've done it all. And, and all three of the boys have been pretty, pretty close to me their whole life. So, you know, if you got something good to say to them, I'd say it. And if they wanted to know the truth, they'd come ask me. You know, I'm not one to kind of sugarcoat it. I'm not one to tell you really? you're, you're up good if you don't, you know. So uh, all their lives, if I thought I could see something and tell them to help them, because the relationship I've had with them, I have. And, and about two weeks ago, or about two months ago, we started talking about it. Yes, sir. And I said, man, Corey, you know, if you need anything before you go out there, just, you know, one day we can change, change some stuff or fix it. And, and he came, came a couple weeks ago. And when they left the arena and I left there and went to the house, I told my wife, that's why I don't rope calves anymore. You know, <laughs> you watch somebody like him and you watch Shane Hanchi and you watch those Cody and you watch those guys. He run 47 head in a row at my house and never, all he would do is throw his hands up, sit, be sitting on the camp and say, okay, Joe B, what we need, what, what, why is that doing that? And we'd talk about it a little bit. Rest assured, I didn't teach him to rope. His dad taught him to rope his family. All I did was take a screwdriver and just turn a few screws and tighten him down and the results have been amazing. He is a roping kid and a good kid. And the future, I mean, he's just outstanding. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Joe alluded to it, and so I want, in your words, talk about your family and, and um, how much they mean to you and why you're here. Um, I mean, my parents have been there for me from the ground up. I mean, never left my side. I got two older brothers. I mean, I've learned from their roping and just learned from, I mean, I have to learn some stuff different because I'm smaller than both of my brothers, but 
I mean, just to look at them, the things they do, I can learn. Because you can learn from different people, from different angles, from, I mean, the way they swing the rope, the way they throw the rope, the way they flank, the way they string, the way they cross. So I've picked up a few good things from them, and I also have my good buddy here that has been with me by my side. Because, I mean, you have some people that will be with you when you're doing good, be with you when you're doing bad. And, I mean, my family has been with me no matter what. If I was 53 in the world... 41 in the world. This year I'm eighth in the world. They've been there no matter what. So that makes it easier to know. It don't really matter where you finish up. I'm with you regardless. So they've been a blessing to me. And it shows. Yep, it shows. I, wanna, I want you to see uh, Corey at work here. And let's take a look, first of all, uh, a little bit earlier in the week. This was day three, seven and six, the run. It's going to show right over here. And guys, if you'll show that, you and Joe can talk about it, Corey. I'll tell you the first thing. This man uses the shortest rope you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> and he's already the fastest guy I know down the rope. So what that allows him to do, he had one little old blip right there when he flanked him, and he still ties him in seven, six. But watch the difference when he gets there. Watch how he's, he's little, yeah, watch the front end. Say he pulls that front end up so high that – it doesn't matter how big you are, it's technique. And when he flanks like that, he doesn't make mistakes stringing a tie. And it is called tie down roping for a reason, isn't it? Yes, sir. It's won or lost when your left foot hits the ground. Talk about right there what you felt. Uh, right there, I felt really good when I come across the line because I've been needing to kind of get confident in myself coming across the line. Right there when I lift up on her, I can feel her just kind of kick loose, and I guess I should have stepped around uh, a little more. But I knew she was a good calf when I crossed that. I was... Time to show up in Vegas, and that's what I've done. Now, now, let's see it one more time. I'm going to show you. When I knew he was going to win the round, back, can we see the, the whole run one more time? And I'll show you. Now, all of us have just a little bit of luck every now and then. And I say all the times, if the roping gods want that rope to go on, you're going to win. Now, right here, he, he starts to get off a little too early when he throws his rope. And watch the loop where it hits. All right, watch. Watch him. See him shift to the right a little bit. He's wanting to get off. Ooh. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> when that route went on, I had to holler, go on, because I knew then it was a day money. <laughs> but tell them what happens to make you miss like that if you would have missed. Um, just wanting off too bad, trying to make something happen that hadn't happened instead of just waiting on it to happen. But it worked out, and I thank God for it. What I want to ask you is when you made that run and that crowd went nuts for you, uh, did that build your confidence? Because you can see it each round with you, but this crowd is spectacular here. Yes, I mean, just waiting on the crowd. I mean, I roped in big crowds, but not a crowd like that. But just to finally let loose and ride up, know you placing, and know you're in a good spot, I mean, it feel unbelievable. To... Pretty good hat throw at the end of that deal, <laughs> yes, I would say, too. It was a dandy. He but... practiced that before he came out here. <laughs> I did. I did. I'll get out in the parking lot. <laughs> Hey, we can't halfway throw a hat if you're going to win a go around. <laughs> Let's take a look at his work from tonight here, Joe. This is in round number seven. <laughs> okay, tonight turned out to be a tougher round than I really thought on the cast. He gets a good start right here. But see this calf come back to the right? When he comes back to the right and ropes him, he's just a little bit strong right there, a little ahead of the game. That's what let that calf hit. But right here, this one made me proud. Look at the difference in the flank than the round he won. Had the front leg in his left hand before the calf ever hit the ground. I didn't really like this calf tonight. I'm not going to lie. Watch it on the tape. And I thought, you know, if you can tie him in nine flat, you'll get by him. But the strength and the position of his flank right there. Watch the front end. See how high? He never let it hit the ground. Therefore, he didn't chase the front leg like he did the other night. And it was very important on this calf to get him flanked good and tied good. And that made the whole run. Yes, sir. Outstanding. Corey, we're all... Uh Expecting and hoping big things for you and, and everybody that I've run across here said what an outstanding young man this guy is and so we're proud to be a part of your, your future that's starting here in Las Vegas with you and your family and we wish you luck the next three rounds here in Las Vegas and we appreciate you being here. Thank you. This is Corey Solomon right here if you will pay him off. Outstanding. Corey Solomon, outstanding young man. Donnie, we have so many guests and, and special guests. I, let's, uh, let's get a light and a camera over here in the, in the top because we've got uh, all kinds of people over here in this section. First from the PRCA properties, our buddy Mike Oliver is here. Sarah Muirhead is here as well with him. Give them a hand over here from the PRCA. And Donnie, you've got uh, one of, world one, champions abound over One there. of my buddies, he's been my buddy for a long time, except for 1982. The world champion bull rider Charlie Sampson's in the house. Yeah. 
Charlie. It's good to have you guys here. And real quickly, I want to come back over this side because we have family and friends. We actually have a whole table of folks here from, uh, from Cody, Wyoming. And I'm, uh, this is uh, Mike Darby and his wife. They own the Irma Hotel, the world famous Irma Hotel right. in Cody, Wyoming. Dan Miller's Cowboy Music Reviews right, right across, across the, the street. street. Yeah. And then one of the television shows I do is on the Outdoor Channel. It's called The Best of the West. It's a long-range hunting show, and we have some of our crew from there as well. Daryl and Wendy, if you'll wave to us as well. It's good to have them here with us tonight. And I see your handsome brother sitting over I, you know, there got, against I've the got, wall. I've uh, got a big part of my family that's out here. Uh, my brother Jim and his wife Brenda and, you know, our, my niece. And would all y'all stand up and just kind of wave? Jim's girls. The whole the Jim's Summer thrilled Megan, about this. You can tell, yeah. Everybody. Look at all of them. Whole family. Hey, family. hey, you might. They might have been trying to hide that fact. <laughs> they might have wanted some peace on Donnie Gay Day. It's Donnie Gay Day. Yes. I mean, they're going. Oh God. <laughs> I know it's a big day for you, isn't it, Jim? Look at. It. <laughs> hey, Dan. Dan. I wonder if it was in the paper. Uh, it had to be because I tried to buy paper in three casinos and they were all gone. They were all, they, yeah, they were all in all. Donnie's truck. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's, uh, let's move <laughs> on to our next guest. And I'll tell you, it, we have been waiting for this lady to come, haven't we? <laughs> there ain't a man here that can say they wouldn't wait for this girl to show up. Yeah. She is uh, in the hunt here in the barrel racing. And, uh, and just like Joe, she has a good heart. And we're going to talk about that as well. She is here to, to help out one of her friends as well. But uh, seven-time NFR qualifier, the beautiful Angie Metters is here this evening. Angie. <laughs> I tell everybody I've touched the pen. <laughs> Have a seat. Okay, I'll sit <laughs> over here then. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> oh, that's a wonderful she got the, sound. She got the mic set off. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, young lady? I'm doing great. How are you guys and everyone else out there? They are doing Good. well. They it's nothing like being in Vegas, huh? <laughs> you know what? This barrel racing is just incredible, isn't it? Tonight, I think the top six were all under 14 seconds, right? Yes, I think so. <laughs> you know they were under 1403, huh? Yeah. I was in oh, a, a double O again for the third time and still like one hole out, so. <laughs> it's been incredible. We've had a, a record set this time already. Um, and this battle in these 13s, I think 1356 won the round this evening on that so and your horse stumbled a little bit tonight we're going to take Two a look at that yeah we're going to take a look yeah she did um i guess i think because i go to the left barrel on both my horses i have to cross the ruts of the girls that go to the right so i think right there they just kind of stumble and I don't know what. The, just don't saying. Know. Yeah, well, I'm I mean, just it was making a, excuses, I, I guess. I don't know. I was stand. I was standing in the same spot during during the barrel race, right ahead of the bull riding, and, and that horse stumbled in the exact same spot. Not quite as severe as last night, but uh, you know, but it, it definitely cost you some time. Yes. Tell us about this horse that you're riding at this finals. Um, the gray horse. Her name is Mulberry. She is an eight-year-old, and she came through the fraternity ranks. And I rode her here last year. She won three go arounds last year. And um, the Sorrel horse is, uh, he's owned by Tripp and Callie Dupierre from Bandera, Texas. He, I got him in June and he was a six year old. He had never been to a rodeo. He had barely been run outside, but he was a very nice fraternity horse. And um, I, the horse I rode last year, the owners decided to take her. So in June, uh, Latricia Duke called and said, I have this horse standing here. Come to try him, see if you can ride him. If you can ride him, take him. And I was like, okay, <laughs> that's, that's great. And so I, I really didn't know how this year was going to go. Um, uh, and he's just been uh, surprising me ever since. So um, I rode him from June until, you know, the end and made the finals on him. And then I got Mulberry back in the 1st of November. So Angie's an incredible story because the first year you came here, how, how old were you at your first national finals? <laughs> Do we have to tell? Yeah, I do, I do, because it's a great story. I was, I was 14. She was 14. Yeah. 14. That was three years ago 14. when she made him the first time. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm 25 now, so I hope no one can add and subtract here. <laughs> I say that, Angie. My, my youngest daughter is 13, and that's very inspiring to young girls, I think, that uh, my daughter loves horses, and, and I know Jim's daughters there's are up there. There's two of them sitting over there. Sitting yeah, right three, over no, here. There's three of them over there. Yeah, uh, awesome. and, 
but the incredible thing about her story, she came two years in a row, then missed and came for, but then there was a gap in there that was incredible, and now you're back at it. And the, yeah. the gap between those was how many years? I think it was 14. 14 years. <laughs> yeah. 14 uh, years. I trained, I kind of slowed down on the rodeo scene, and um, I trained fraternity horses for several years. And I finally, last year, I was like, you know, I've got a horse that's good enough to go to the finals, and that kind of lit the fire again and um i ended up making it and it's been great <laughs> I, i've missed vegas <laughs> yeah and yeah. i think you appreciate it more now than you do at 14. oh yeah oh yeah you just there's so much that goes into it and you know a lot of people at home they see this on tv you know just the nfr and they don't know really behind how many people that it takes to go i mean that's behind these contestants if without our help and our family and our friends helping us I mean, you could not do it. You or how hard it is. Because it is. When, did I talk, when did I talk to you? August? And you yes, were way August. behind. Yes. She, like, I said, <laughs> I hey, like, you know, I haven't been watching, but you're not up there. <laughs> and she, yeah. she texted me back and said, I have a horse that hasn't been anywhere, but he's good enough. And I, I, I just need a couple more months. And so yes. I texted her back and I said, well, you got August and September. <laughs> yes. And then it wasn't long. I got a text one day and she said, guess what? I'm in. <laughs> you know, that's the kind of stuff people don't know. It's not yeah. just show up, pick up your invitation to Vegas and say, oh, thank you. I'll be there. Yes. How, long, how long does it take to have, to have that, the, the feeling um, that, that your horse has the potential and, and the ability and the stamina to be able to make it to the NFR, um, let alone compete? Because once you make the NFR, and why y'all bring different horses because not all of them will compete in this arena because it's a different venue. It How long does it very... take to, to know that? Um, you know, as far as the fraternity horse, I think you kind of go through your fraternity year with them. They're four and five year old years and kind of they'll, you know, give you an idea if they can do it. But rodeo is such a different deal. You have different variables in it as far as the ground goes, the big crowds, the lights, cameras, you know, things like that, that some horses don't take to as well. And even the horse that I made the finals on this year, the sorrel horse, um, he was sit, he's six years old, and I wasn't sure how he would handle this setup. It's very scary down in the alley for him, and you know, it's a, a small pin, and he's a big, long strided horse. And the little gray horse is shorter strided, quicker footed. And um, so, you know, I, I think, you know, it, it just depends on the horse, really. So, what I want to do, Angie, let's take a look at you at work here earlier. This was the 1398 run, and then let's talk about a friend that Angie is here to help as well. But talk about this run. This was a 1398. Yes, this is a sorrel. He's six years old. He kind of, he, that's kind of his normal first barrel. He kind of steps by. That was a good second barrel, I thought, for him. And just, you know, I really thought that, I was proud of him. That was the first good run that he had. The first night I ran him, he kind of got by the first barrel and was a little lost. But that I'm going to tell you what, coming in, too, that barrel's hidden. The first barrel's hidden, isn't it? Yes, it is. You can't see it until you're, like, halfway out in the arena. But he's a very honest horse, and he tries hard every time. And Are that's why he's here. Are you going to get to keep riding him? Yes, I hope so. Good. I hope so, too, because he looks so. like if he makes that run day yes. in and day out, he's you're going to so get a lot fast. of checks. Yeah. He, he is. He's fast, and he gives it 110 every time. I'd like to take a look, guys, if you could uh, cue it up there, the run from tonight, and we'll see this little stumble, Angie, coming okay. out of this, this second barrel here. But, boy, you're so tight on every one of these barrels here this evening. The ribbon? Different horse. Yeah, Mulberry is, um, she likes to fade to the first barrel. <laughs> And you have to be on your game to ride her. But when she gets around him, she usually gets a check. She even tripped leaving the yeah, second yeah. barrel. So she had about three times she kind of stumbled there. Let so. me add to that. The normal person can't get this mare around the barrels. <laughs> that, that, you watch this. She is not along for the ride. She is busy. <laughs> She's jockeying. Watch both Very hands, busy. both feet the whole time. And I this is where I thought hurt you worse than anything, yes, right there. Yes, I actually thought I drug the barrel over with her hip, but I turned the third barrel and saw it was up, and so I was just keep going. <laughs> It was a good run. Angie Thank is also you. involved in helping out, just like Joe and Donnie do. There's a friend of yours that is in need, and we're going to try to, to help that out as well. So tell us yes. about that, Angie. Um, I have a friend that's been a dear friend of mine for years, and um, she was 20. Her name is Katie. She's from Oklahoma. She was out here with me last year, and um, she is, has been battling cancer for about 10 years, and she is 33 years old. 
she has a stage four brain tumor right now. And, um, uh, you know, it just kills me that she's not out here with me now. But um, on my website, um, I have a, it's angiemetters.net. I have a place um, that people can go and buy t-shirts and um, they can also just make a donation. Um, anything would be so appreciated. Okay, and they can go to, again, it's angiemetters.net. Dot net, if yes, like angiemetters.net, yes, okay. and there's a page for it. It has kind of a story about her. She just had a two-year-old little girl, and we were kind of holding the, can the, the tumor for like 10 years. She lived a pretty normal life, and then she, ha she got pregnant and had this little girl, and I guess after that she went back for another checkup, and the tumor had grown. And so all summer we've been, she's had like four or more, you know, surgeries, and They've been doing everything they can, but we all know cancer is, yeah. you know, sometimes it's not good. We <laughs> but we're still you. not giving up on her. <laughs> no, no. This is a great family to be a part of, and Angie, we it appreciate is. you. Rodeo is uh, awesome. The people are amazing. And before you leave tonight, I don't know if you heard, it's Donnie Gay Day in Las Vegas, <laughs> and most people have been giving you a hug. So if you'll do that, Angie, we appreciate Give her a hand. Angie Metters is here this evening. Yes. Oh, you big time, buddy. <laughs> Angie Metters, yeah. Isn't it a good group of people, huh? Just absolutely good group of people. You know, and I'm going to tell you what else people don't realize, and we've all been through it out here. It's hard enough to come out here and compete, but when you got something like that, you know, that you care about, or you got somebody like that that's in that big of a bind, it never leaves your mind, you know, and that, that adds pressure to it because I know it's Angie's, it's been hard on her because she was out here last year with her, and this year she couldn't make the trip, so... You know, three more go-rounds, maybe it'll turn around four, let her yep. win a couple, and, and we'll give some, you know, get to that web page and help Everybody out. Everybody help out, yeah. I'm so glad, I'm glad these girls are here. They're getting sick because these next two young men, I'm bringing them both out together, girls. These two are the biggest heartthrobs, aren't they, Donnie? Not only in bull riding, but Not these... Not to me, but... <laughs> well, I thought you said one was cute. Anyway, these guys... Uh, are in the bull riding. It's their that first. Was Charlie. It's their first time to uh, the national finals rodeo, and man, it makes me feel good. Not only about the young, young men, the young guys. That's what good. he was talking about. Exactly earlier, yeah. right. These are good young men, and they're good bull riders. Jacob O'Mara and Chandler Bounds. They're both here. Come in Come here, down, gentlemen. gentlemen. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming here, man. Good to see you. I'm liking it. Boy, cutie patooties, huh, girls? I'm telling you, look at these young studs up here. Thank you guys for coming tonight. I know it's been a busy week for you and a hectic week. You have no idea. We're way too old to know how busy they've been. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought it was Donnie Gay Day. He, he's been busy all day. Look what you got to look forward to. <laughs> Sat around and listened to Donnie talk in the locker room. <laughs> I want both of you. Chandler, you start out. I'm glad you made it here this evening. Talk about it's first time for both of you, and you're both doing exceptionally well, just like Corey is in the tie-down. Talk about being here, Chandler, first time. Uh, I mean, it's great to be here first in FR. I uh, won the Rookie of the Year this year and uh, was the only rookie to make the finals, so, I mean, that's a pretty good accomplishment. And oh, a goal. That's a great accomplishment. <laughs> a great accomplishment. A goal that I had uh, that I've dreamed about since I was 10 years old and I just got started riding. So uh, it's uh, awesome to accomplish that. This is my first year. First year and you're doing very well here as well. Interesting. He, Donnie, talk about a PRCA card. You can ride with a card. This guy earned like four or $5,000 with just his card. No, his permit. His permit, I'm sorry, permit. and then bought his card. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's so many opportunities for bull riders and, and these guys, they have already, I mean, they've been winning a, a lot of money for quite a while that you haven't seen. And, and uh, uh, you know, the high school and, and, and get your permits, you go to bull riding jackpots, you guys have been getting the money. But um, uh, how about you, Jacob? How is your first NFR? Um, how's that feeling to you right now? It, it's, it's been great, and it's been a great year, and uh, just blessed to be here and uh, just fulfilling my dreams and uh, living up to my expectations of myself and my goals and uh, just just loving it. So it's been awesome. It has been, and these guys are 20 and 21 years of age no, here. No, no. 20. 20. 20 and 20. 
Yeah. 20 See, I, and 20. I thought, I Jacob's thought, younger I, I, than I, I, me, but uh, I'm a little older than Jacob. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Won't be long. They'll be shaving and everything. It's going to be... Yeah. It's going to be a big deal for these young guys here. Uh, I tell you, when I said they're doing well, they're tearing it up here and making a lot. Nothing like being young and handsome and a lot of money. You're just too young to go in any place, but that's all right. Wait, uh, wait. You just said young, handsome, and money. You can go any place. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but you know, there's some places that you might not want to go to. <laughs> Don't let him book on you. Go everywhere you can, all you can, till you can't. <laughs> Let's take a look at it. That's right. <laughs> They're both about to start crying now. You scared them so bad they don't know. I think we have Chandler's work. Uh, we have Chandler queued up first back there. This is a 91-point ride from round number two. You and Donnie can talk about this, Chandler. This young man can ride. Take a look. Take it away, Chandler. Uh, great bull right here of Jeff Robinson's uh, bugle. Jumped out there, round left. Got the whirling, fading across the pin right there, and I felt great about... Uh, Five, six seconds into it, I uh, let the air out of him and uh, got a few uh, bonus points there. Spurred the dog out of him, that's right. <laughs> okay, that, that's Bugle, but it's R-M-E-F. And, and Rocky Mountain Duck no Foundation Bugle. Yeah. That's it. Uh, well, now, just watch this right. I mean, the littlest guy in the pen got the biggest bull in the pen. That always seems to happen. But you know what? I like the way you finished it off because, you know, you don't have to spur them, but you just do it because you can because you like all your buddies back there that you're, that you're drumming that night. Watch this, you know. That, that, I mean, that's kind of fun, isn't it? Yeah, it's a great... Uh, if you have a spurring contest, uh, everybody back there gets in the contest in the locker room, and it's great to go out there and whoop one down to be 91. <laughs> <laughs> All right. After you know, this I'm, one, I'm guys, jealous. We've seen that one enough. Guys. <laughs> yeah. That's 91. Jacob, he's ready to watch one right here himself. So. I tell you what, that, that's a good bull ride. Let's uh, let's put up the one from tonight, guys, and and both these guys. Tonight was a rough night out there, but first let's take a look at Chandler. I believe this is from tonight. This you? Yeah, this is me. Oh, this, uh, this doesn't last too long. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Where's that whoop on that? What happened there? Hold it. Cut. He Come let back, the air Chandler. out of you, yeah. Lost my feet. That uh, left foot right there came out of him and uh, gave me a pretty good look at slamming. That. Uh, you know, now, now, you know, whenever somebody said, oh, he just stepped on him a little. <laughs> He's too that big hurts, to step a little. Yeah, it hurts a little bit. Uh, got me in the hip, but it ain't too bad. That horn in the butt last night was a lot worse than Yeah, that and, and <laughs> you know, and, and uh, some people may want a visual on it, but you know what? He showed that to Cody Whitney earlier tonight. <laughs> I happened to turn around that it did leave a mark. I got <laughs> So, uh, you know, we got a little extra time, Chandler. <laughs> no, we'll, uh, Donnie, you didn't get the picture? Come on. I, what are you know, doing? I can't get my dang. I, I text with one finger. So I, I mean, this was hey, quick. By the time he gets his glasses out of this I pocket, his say, phone out this pocket, and he gets ready, it'll be really bad. They're gone. It'll be really bad by the end. They wrote another one. <laughs> Jacob, let's take a look at you, and you both have got a lot of money so far and I want to tell people it's Jacob O'Mara he and I were talking about that some people say O'Mara it is O'Mara Jacob O'Mara let's take a look at his work Donnie from earlier in the week as well and you guys can talk about this go ahead Jacob tell us about it uh, this is a great bull right there uh, runner-up bull of the year of uh, 4L Diamond S and bulls uh, they won a lot of money on that bull and I, I know his reputation and uh, Man, just was so excited to have him here at the finals. I've been waiting to get on that bull all year, and just to have him here was was uh, great. It, it was an awesome deal. Yeah, big iron, 4L, Charlie Lowry and David Simpson, and, uh, you know, the bull to the right away from your hand, no problem, back around into your hand. You know, j just a, a nice bull ride, and, and that feeling, um, does it ever get old? Uh, no, no, it gets better yeah. here. <laughs> the, the more you go here, the better it gets. Well, and, and uh, the, the checks that y'all are cashing, it looks pretty good. I, yeah. I had a, a paper that had some of the money on it, but I don't know what I did with it. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was that Donnie Gay Day paper, and he done lost it. He got all them sent back to Mesquite. <laughs> <laughs> it was a dandy, but he misplaced it. So let's take a look at tonight. And this again for you, Jacob. He's got his hat cleaned off now, Donnie, but this was close. Yeah. Go ahead, that, Jacob. Well, that boy started out great. I thought it was going to get good, and then he kind of lost his footing, and 
and uh, rocked me back on the end of my arm, and I knew it was coming then, so I uh, just... <laughs> you know, you were real, real fortunate. You're supposed to spin yes. to the right real fast. Well, he tripped. Watch it. See, missed right. his front left foot. Then he just gathers himself, and I mean, it was high old silver. He jumped forward and yeah. uh, jerked him down. And I mean, just lucky that you missed the horns on the way down. Yeah. Bullfighters are uh, the bullfighters have been fantastic this week, and you know, but good right turn. I'm thinking, take it away, Leon. Then, well, holy moly, that was exit stage left. Yeah. You know, yeah. wow. Yeah, bull riding is fun <laughs> most of the time. I don't care if you love Jesus, huh? <laughs> I guarantee you. I mean, he comes. He comes walking back, and he had to sh yeah. show him the back end of you. I mean, he worked on this. Well, this bull. It's, it's, this, I fixed it. Sh now. Show him the rest of your hair. I'm jealous again. But <laughs> that bull stepped, stepped right there in his head. Well, you, you, you know about that hair back in your heyday, huh? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I hey, wish we hey, had some pictures Dan, of it. I'll tell you. Dan, this kid's gonna be all right. He He's comes on back fine. with it, don't yeah. he? If we had a picture, they're all in black and white. But oh, if we on. had a, if we had a picture, little Lord Fauntleroy lives. I'll tell you, it was uh, it was some grand dandy. Oh, uh, they stuff. haven't seen that yet. Butch Kirby will probably <laughs> clue them in on it. Though. I'm going to ask you both a dumb question because I think we know. Tell us your your goals here, Chandler. Uh, my goal, uh, my one of my biggest goals is to win the Rookie of the Year and to make the finals. But. Uh, Another goal is mine come in and ride all ten bulls, but I had a little tough luck there at the beginning. I slapped my first one. Uh, my uh, second bull uh, won the round. Uh, third bull wasn't too good. Uh, fourth bull I slapped two and uh, won the round on my sixth one. And then tonight was uh, had a little tough luck. Jacob, your goals here coming in. Uh, well, my goal this year was to come into the finals in the top five and uh, accomplish that. And uh, just to, everybody's goal is to come here and ride 10 bulls and win a gold buckle, you know. But uh, just taking it one bull at a time and uh, just seeing how much money I can win. So that's pretty much it. I want to tell you about both these young men. They're gentlemen, too, both of them. Just well We've had a stage full of good kids tonight. Good, And I'm good telling you, that's men. the next part of rodeo because Donnie and Charlie can't ride them forever. No, no. We're, we're way done. Stick a fork in us. You know, all we can do is talk about it, you know. But you know, it's a lot of fun watching the guys, but uh, this year's NFR, I think, has been, been great. We've got six first-time guys in, in the bull riding mm -hmm. uh, at the NFR, and one of them's uh, number one in the world in Shane Proctor. He's not a, a young rookie, been on a big stage, but first time in this venue. And, and y'all all been in that locker room when we're just a little over halfway. And this is kind of a, I've said a number of times, this is a different rodeo, different things happen, bulls do, you know, just it's almost dumb stuff what they, some of the bulls will do. I mean, just like the, your bull tonight, I mean, that, that never happens. Uh, the bull that bucked Clayton Fultino, off, I've seen that bull over 75 times over the last three years. First time he was out, he went to the right. I've never seen that. Tonight he bucked like he was supposed to. You know, it's just some, some weird things, but this is the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo, and it is the most special place in the world. But you got to you pull your pants up and show them the front of them boots. Oh, uh, those I are riding boots? Yes, sir, those are my riding boots. Dollar signs on the front of his riding boots. Six, gun, six guns on the back of his riding boots. And shy and retiring in this boy. Yeah, yeah. You know, these guys, uh, they're the future of the business, and uh, man, I would like for y'all to give them a round of applause because they represent the entire locker room. Everybody loves them in there. Chandler Bounds, Jacob O'Mara. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank y'all so much. Thank you, Jacob. Pretty good interviews, too, Chandler, for the first time in Vegas, huh? Yeah, they'll get practiced up. They'll probably take over the show. Jacob. Boy, pretty nice stuff, huh? Man, it's very great encouraging. Stuff. Great, great stuff. Um, and we go from those two young, handsome men. Well, it's a segue is what it is. We've got a couple of other guys coming out here that I'm thrilled that they make time to get out here. Uh, last night they were busy getting ready for the Open tonight. They had, uh, it is Donnie Gay Day, they had presentations to make. Yes, you hear that. Here are the voices of the National Finals Rodeo. Boyd Paul Hamus, Bob Tallman are in the house tonight. Gentlemen. What are you doing sneaking up behind us here? I didn't. Hi, Boyd. I was uh, Hi, Rapunzel. I'm not on yet. They killed my mic. 
Up, oh, we need their microphones it's on. The best I ever sounded. Yeah. Donnie's loving it, aren't you? <laughs> I, <laughs> best I ever sounded. That's sabotage right there, Donnie. Yeah. You did that, didn't you? That's, that's Send the us into battle with no oh, bullets. Yeah. Keep working on it, love. Are y'all gonna fix? Are y'all gonna fix the microphones back hello, there? Hello, hello, hello. Mine's hello. on. Now it's on. Now, now it's on. on. There you go. All right. Hi, Rapunzel. <laughs> <laughs> You should see some of those pictures of back when this boy had some hair now. Come on, sit down there, Bob, please. Back, back in the day. When he rode Oscar day. for 97, his hair was 99. <laughs> <laughs> How about these young men that just left the stage? Aren't Pretty they awesome? Pretty exciting, Heroes. isn't it? Pretty Heroes. exciting. We had Corey Solomon on before you got here as well. So Can you watch my water, will you? <laughs> you broke again? <laughs> no, I grabbed you quick enough this time. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas till nine months, then it happens at home. <laughs> <laughs> or in a cheap hotel. I think that's going to be the basis okay. of our contribution tonight. No, I'm going to give in. you three. I'm going to give you three rounds left. Yes, sir. Please. So I'm going to give you the three three deals. Mathematically, you can win ninety nine thousand five hundred. Okay. So so if, if you win everything, average in three rounds. So Casey Field is basically. I mean, unless something crazy happens, then again, three rounds. But he's. He stays, the three guys mathematically in the bareback riding are, are Field, Low, and Dent. But Dent's 97,000 behind. So yep. he'd, he'd have to, just in case, he'd have to fall off. Steer wrestling, it'd be Luke Branquino, Jason Miller, and Sean Greenfield. And I know I'd only say three, but you better not count out Trevor Knowles yet either, because he's still got some chances, because he's good in the average, decent in the average. Team are open. Jet Johnson and uh, Turtle Powell would be your world champions if we paid it today. Paid the average today. Trevor and Patrick. We're not would, going to. Patrick, I know we're not, but Pat, Trevor and Patrick would finish second. Travis, tr uh, Clay and, and uh, Clay and Travis Graves would finish third. Bronk Ryden, uh, Taos Muncie did a really good thing tonight. He's uh, it, it's him, Jesse Wright, or Wade Sundell. That's basically where that race is at. Tie down roping. Cody O would beat Tough Cooper by about five or six thousand, but only Clint Cooper by ten. T Clint is actually the Cooper. To keep your eyes on. Did you say that? Because where, cause where, where is tough is like seventh in average. He gave it away eight. last night. He's eighth, and that pays four He gave it away tonight when he couldn't tie that KF. If he wins that go tonight, yeah. moves to sixth in the average, then he's got a chance. But exactly. when he, tonight, it, I kept telling him, y'all better don't forget and I'm going to tell that. you this about two Cody. Cody is Cody's chunking it now. He's not safety enough. He's not going to just win the average. Cody wants that gold buckle. It's his world champion. So He was here last night, Boyd, and just to listen to him talk about it. Did you hear determination? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I know that guy has oh got it. No, I about fell out of my chair. I heard businessman. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know what a cowboy hat. Hey, Bob Tolman always said when a kid, well, he was kind of talking about me at the time, but I, I did grow up a little bit. He said when a kid finally realizes it's the business, they become the man that makes the money. Taos Muncie's mama told us that today when we were at a board gaming uh, autograph session. Taos's mom came and talked, and she goes, You know, the difference between him now at 23. As opposed to when he won the world at 19, he's thinking more. You know, he's thinking not just, hey, I don't care if I buck off. I just want to win first in every round. He's just riding the horses for what they are. Barrel racing, though, yes. barrel racing is really good. Sears, obviously, it, Sherry would win it tonight by about 5,000 over Brittany. And then, and, and Lynn's would finish third. But it's so close. I mean, there's... There's Has it not been phenomenal, just the way it comes up on the board? I, yeah. I, I've never seen that, I don't think. And in the bull riding, J.W., he needed he, to ride. He's, he's got. He's got to come and. and he's got a bull to give. He's, he's got to pull down some gold. Shane's rounds. got a bull to give. Shane's four bulls to JW's three. So Shane's got a bull to give, and that's. I mean, that's. You can't even go yeah, any farther than that. Yeah, you know, that can happen. He can give it tomorrow. Just right. Like that's what I'm saying. With three rounds. But three that, rounds. The, the, the you have got to ride all the way through Saturday night in the bull riding because you're going to have you know these young guys. You know, I think uh, I think Jacob's in the lead, or Jacob or Chandler One's in the lead in the average. Yeah, Jacob is. Yeah. Jacob is. Yes, Jacob is, and he's ridden four or seven. But, but I would have been here earlier, but Angie wanted to hug me. You know, seven. And so. Se <laughs> Aren't you glad I got it here tonight for you, huh? <laughs> so, so I know Tom was I'm about to I'm sitting out there hugging a palm tree, and he's hugging Angie <laughs> Matters. Felt hey, pretty good. He though, looked dude. like a ch Chihuahua wiener dog cross. He did. <laughs> yeah, but it'd make she'd make a. Small dog break a big chain too. <laughs> um, <laughs> what about tonight? Your spoilers, the three, the split first, second, and third, and the calf roping. That made a lot of difference in them other guys' that average position. And it also knocked it, Cody down to go around yep, about five thousand bucks. That was yep. huge. 
because they went 14,000 instead of 18,000. So there's 12 grand that got split up by three guys. Let's don't. Well, oh. you can ask Bob about the monkey. I will not tell you about the goat. <laughs> you were holding them. Oh, jeez. I don't want to hear. You're right, Joe. Let's don't. I told you. I told you don't let it get started. There, the reason that that question came up, let's, let's hear about the monkey. About four years ago, but, and, and the crew here, our great crew, that they still, Bob, talk about you and the monkey. Now, I can't even say that without you having to tell the story it's because now it's... own just... show out here. Bob oh. and the monkey. <laughs> no wonder you're always saying what goes on out here stays out here. God. Oh, this, yeah, but this happened in Worcester, Massachusetts. Okay, tell it because these guys are begging me for it. If you will, please, tonight, and then we'll okay. get some stuff. Are there away. any PETA people in here? I doubt in this room. No. It don't okay. matter. We got the place ready. <laughs> That's all right. all right. When he was done, he petted the monkey. I, I, yeah, I ain't pet the monkey if you want to. He <laughs> <laughs> pet my monkey, big Let's boy. tell the story, Bob. All right. We're putting on this rodeo for the very first time in Worcester, Massachusetts. Okay, it's just about 60 miles from Boston. Got the greatest Army-Navy store you've ever been to in your life. And uh, Frank Sinatra opened up uh, the show on a Wednesday night. We put the dirt in when he was done and put on this rodeo. And so Thursday night, we're getting ready to have this rodeo, and uh, I'm announcing rodeo horseback, and I'm riding J.W. Stoker's horse, which is a white horse with a white plastic saddle with a great big trick, you know, trick riding horn on it and all these, these <laughs> loops in places. Because it was the only broke horse. That, I don't, the, the, yeah, the, don't want to put my uh, hand in the pocket. There's a monkey in there. Yeah. So... Jimmy Anderson, good friend of all of ours and a wonderful man, he had this capuchin monkey. They cost about five to ten thousand dollars, depending on how you high grade them out of Africa or wherever they come from. And they're little bitty monkeys, and they will bite, scratch, and eat you alive. So you've all seen Tommy Lucia and the monkey whiplash and the dogs and the sheep and all that kind of stuff. So we're about halfway through the rodeo, and these people would clap and cheer about anything that you did. You just move your horse 16 feet, and they went crazy. You've done it. Oh, yeah. They love the rodeo. Yeah. This is these now, Boston, Massachusetts. So rodeo's going along pretty good. We're body slamming people. The place got 18,000, you know. I mean, it's packed, hanging out of the rafters. And everything that happened, they absolutely loved it. Well, by about halfway through, they got on the beer, and were really loving it and having fun. So Jimmy Anderson comes out to do this act. That's a little bitty arena in this little bitty building, and I really can't leave because there ain't no place to go except in a buck and shoot. So I'm sitting out there on my white horse. You got a what? Huh? Put in your hand in your pocket, and shoot. Oh. So I just stayed out there in the arena. I'm phonetically right. correct. I do this for a living. I lie to anybody for money. So... They turn out the sheep, and here comes Jimmy with the dog on the string. He takes the dog off the string, and the monkey's on there. And he kind of runs around them sheep a little bit, and them sheep kind of scattle, scatter. The arena is a perfect circle, okay? So there ain't a corner to get into where you can bounce out of. And this dog on dog, on dog he bites one of them sheep right in the butt. <laughs> and they just jump and hook them. Well, when they did, two of them run underneath my horse. And you can always, uh, for those of you who've ever rode a horse that had a fit, you can feel her guts are growling, and they take the bit, and you know the next thing is if you got teeth in your butt, you better die, take yeah, a bite. You couldn't have drove a pin up his butt with a jackhammer. Uh -huh. this was a 20-penny nail wasn't going to fit with a jackhammer. <laughs> so this horse goes to jump trying to get away from his sheep, and a stupid dog runs right underneath my horse. With the monkey. No, he went the monkey on his back. The dog with the monkey on his back runs right underneath my horse to get a sheep on the other side when he had four or five easy ones to get out here. <laughs> Stupid dog. Border Collie, I love him. And when that dog brought that monkey underneath my horse, my horse jumped in the air and kicked with both hind feet. I was a lot thinner then, and my little skinny butt went sliding in that plastic saddle. When he kicked, he kicked that monkey right in the side of the head. Whop. <laughs> okay, uh, great big, no, not deader than disco at this moment, but a great big horse with one hind foot with shoes on kicking a four-pound monkey in the side of the head is basically devastating. <laughs> now, let me explain it to you this way. 
There are sheep running all over the place. The dog's going crazy. My horse is having him a fit. Jimmy Anderson is using obscenities that I knew what he was talking about. Killing my monkey. Monkey. Well, I don't have a beeper in here, and we're on the World Wide Web. So, the people think it's an act, and they are going nuts. I am trying to gather this horse up, and I guarantee what that white saddle was blistering my butt. I could not keep my feet in the stirrups. This horse went crazy, and I looked behind me every time I could find that dog screamed out, get that goddamn dog out of here. And that, he just kept running under my horse. And I, one time he went by me and looked, and that monkey is tits up. <laughs> I mean, his body is rigid and his head is hated. <laughs> his eyes were closed and crossed inside. Anderson was, had a piece of string, and he's swinging the string at me, that dog leash, and cussing me, you killed my monkey, you killed my monkey. I said, get the dog. Catch the dog. I don't care if the monkey's dead or alive. Just catch the dog. Well, <laughs> about this time, seven, Greg Bean. Greg Bean's book. Greg Bean, yeah. yeah seven Buffalo or, Bill. Buffalo Bill. Seven or eight of our people, very responsible, common sense and logic type of people, run into the arena to help the dog with the monkey. The dog is biting at the people. The monkey's dead and hanging on the side of the dog like this. My horse is going nuts, and J.W. Stoker's hollering, Hold on, Bobby! <laughs> Bob Talbot, that's the monkey right there. Give all these guys a hand, if you will, please. Outstanding. Oh, my word. We're going to give away some prizes, and let me, <laughs> let me tell you the ground rules first. You must be present to win one prize per person, and we don't mess around. When we read it, let us know you're here and start coming up towards the stage. We have great prizes, Donnie. Let's start it off with two gift certificates for the boot barn. The first one, Donnie, is going to... All right. First one is going to Amanda Johnson, Minnewaukan, North Dakota. Home of Dwayne Howard. Come on down here, NFR bull rider Amanda. You She's coming tonight. right here. We've got another one, Joe. All right. Second one goes to Jason Custer. Jason Custer right here in the front. All right, we've got a couple of Wrangler gift cards for you. And this is for, wow. Parrish is the last name from Boston, Massachusetts. Oh, my God. Oh, really? You ever been to Boston? I hope she's here. I hope she saw the monkey. There she is right there. Yeah. <laughs> Too young. Never mind. Oh, is that a pet monkey you have with you? All right, bring it on over here. Here you go. Congratulations from Boston. Another one of those Wrangler gift cards. Joe. Dave Gines. Gines. Dave Gines. All right. There you go. Right there. All right, we have certificates for Justin Boots, Donnie. Who do you have that first one? Okay, Robert Olivar. Uh, Bylas, Arizona. From Arizona. Are you here? Robert Olivar, are you here? Come on down. Come on down. We've got another Justin Boot certificate for you. And this one is going to C.R. Miller from Tennessee. Are you here? Anybody see? Go, oh, right here beside me. There you go, sir. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Donnie, we got a couple of J.W. Brooks gift certificates. Beautiful hats, $250 gift certificates. Joe. First one, Darlene Smith. Oh. All right, darling. Well, we got another Smith going to win this other one. Casey Smith, Clearwater, Idaho. How about that? How did we do that? Uh, we can okay. do that again. You can, get, you can pay us out back for it, okay? Thank Joe, you. Joe, grab one out of there for this. Yes, sir. This is for a well, big Heroes of the Stage. Good thing you wear a hat. And the CD that goes with that. Up. Beautiful book and CD package. And, Joe, if you would. Uh, um, Mel Vin Rogers. Right there. Oh, outstanding. Right down, down front's front. been good tonight. <laughs> Congratulations. There you go. And next up is a Montana Silversmith earrings. Beautiful right there, Donnie. Okay, they are beautiful earrings. I was looking at them and everything, but <laughs> Melvin Rogers. <laughs> Melvin, Melvin, you in here? All right. Oh, no, he already won the... 
He already won oh, that. Yeah. Draw another one, huh? Donnie. This is for the earrings again. One prize per person. Oh, you got to love this. Bill Bentley. Bill Bentley, you're going to really look good running the time event shoot at Pasadena, Texas with these earrings. Come on down here and get to Are you in here, Billy? Here he comes. All right. Right over here. Outstanding. Oh, Bill. I'll hand those to him. We've got one of the vests. No, no. Can't win another one. This is one of the Gold Coast but they are vests nice. that we have here. Who's the winner, Joe? Gloria Thompson. Gloria, man, oh, right down. Y'all gonna have to get here early if you don't win something. Looks like. Here you go. Congratulations. And then we've got. Uh, let me hold the bag here, Donnie. This is one of the great piece Boyd, of luggage yeah, from Boyd Gaming. Boyd Gaming. These bags. All right, Robert. Robert Walker, Boring, Oregon. How do you Robert? like living Boring, Oregon? That's kind of what I thought about the whole state. Are you here, Which, Robert? <laughs> I mean, I learned how to fly, you know, just outside of Portland, and it rained oh, every day. Coming way back there from the back. Come on Come down. Come on, Good Robert. For you, you, up here. you have got probably the greatest piece of luggage in town. And then next is the guitar, right? This Fender guitar, guitar. boy, did you see who all signed that? Eli Young Band, Faith Hill. This Tracy is a big Lawrence. night on the this guitar. This is a big night on this guitar. Did we draw it out there yet, Joe? Who is it? Cindy Donahue. Outstanding. The Cindy. floor has kicked tonight. Outstanding. This guitar, we've got a uh, high dollar case right there for you as well on, we're on this side of the stage. <laughs> I want to tell you that the evening is young. If you would like to go upstairs to Gary LaFue's Buck and Ball, the Ace in the Hole Band, George Strait's band is playing up there. Music all evening long. And after we're done, Donnie Gay is going to be down here with Joe Beaver signing pictures. I think so. Tomorrow, tomorrow night's night. going to be a big night. Bold to be blue tomorrow night, and Trevor Brazil is going to be with us here if tomorrow he night. If he doesn't win the go-around. If he doesn't yeah, win exactly the go-around, right. he'll be here. Remember? We hope you had a good time tonight. Good thank you so much for coming to National Finals tonight. We Enjoy the NFR experience. Thank you. Thank you for watching and attending the show. We hope you enjoyed this presentation of National Finals tonight at the Gold Coast where all the cowboys go after the rodeo. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow, same time, same place. This has been a presentation of Boyd Gaming. The fun isn't over yet. We invite you to head upstairs for Gary LaFue's legendary Buck and Ball. Live music with members of George Strait's Ace in the Hole Band. Dancing, beer and drink specials. A mechanical bull and best of all, no cover charge. We're gonna party till the cows come home at the Buck and Ball. Oh,